Hey guys, it's Kat. Okay, so while I'm real, so really excited, I want to talk about space. Space is so cool, okay. Okay, so, as I believe I've already talked about on this channel, I think I am doing dual enrollment at a local community college. And today, we, well, I just got back from a talk, free to the public, it was, it was, there were a lot of people there, and it was by a Nobel Prize winning astronomer, um, John Mather, and it was just the coolest thing, because space is awesome, just space is so cool, and there's just so much we don't know, but you look back like 50 years ago and we know so much more than we knew 50 years ago and it's just, it's so cool. Okay, but I should probably mention the slightly embarrassing thing that I said to John Mather. <laughs> because this morning, there was a thing where all the astronomy students, because I'm, I'm taking astronomy classes, and I'm, I'm taking it astronomy 151 which is like the introductory astronomy class and my professor said that hey this morning we're gonna have John Mather come in and just a really informal Q&A type thing and get a conversation going and I was like okay yeah sweet that sounds awesome I get to just we get to just chat, chat with John Mather that's really cool yeah and um, they were just talking about all these things, like, John Mather is, he won a Nobel Prize for discovering the back, like, the background radiation of the universe. Like, looking at the radiation and that, how that can tell us things about how the universe was made, where it came from, what, what it was like a long time ago, all that kind of stuff, and that's just really neat. So, so he's done all of that, and then he's also working on the, the James Webb uh, Space Telescope that's going to go up hopefully next year, like next October-ish. Um, and that's going to be a lot more powerful than the Hubble. And we're going to get a lot of really cool pictures because it's got um, infrared light picture taking capabilities which the Hubble does not have and this is gonna be so cool I'm so excited because the Hubble telescope has been active for 27 years so that's a lot longer than I've been alive and that's, so probably every space picture I have ever seen has come from the Hubble like every actual space picture and not just like a picture taken of the view screen of a telescope because that's it's it's, it's really the Hubble is awesome but the James Webb telescope that it promises to be so much better because it's gonna be orbiting like a million miles away from Earth and it's yeah and it's got this solar shield on it about the size of a tennis court that's gonna it's got five layers to it it's gonna be between the picture taking stuff and the sun and the shields here and so it doesn't start emitting it to keep it cold so it doesn't start emitting its own infrared light and thus mess up every all of its pictures that it's taking and oh i, I got completely off track okay so John Mather was working on both of those really cool projects. So a lot, so people were asking him questions this morning about, there were only like uh, 14 of us in the room, I think, ish, 14, 15. And just that they were asking him all these deep and science-y type questions. And I'm just sitting over here like, I'm in a, yeah, I, I don't know anything about this, but I'm just absorbing like a sponge. This is, this is interesting. Yeah, this is cool. So then, okay, back, back to the slightly embarrassing bit. So at near the end of our time that we had, he 
I said, no, there's a couple people in here who haven't asked any questions yet. And he looks directly at me and is like, how about you? Do you have any questions? And I'm just, and I said, this is like verbatim what I said. I'm just an Astronomy 151 student. I, I don't know enough about this to be asking questions. And of course, my professor who was in there was just like, oh no, you can always ask questions, be curious. And I'm just like, I don't know what I don't know. Like, I don't even know what questions I should be asking. Like, not, not should, but I don't know what questions there are to ask. Like. Before I walked into that room, all I knew was that there was an astronomer who won a Nobel Prize who's giving a talk on space. So, yeah, but that, that, that wasn't the embarrassing bit because that, that comes immediately after when he was like, okay, now me asking you, what is it about astronomy and what do you find interesting about astronomy? And I, this was my actual response. I said, space. As a general rule, space is awesome. That was my response. <laughs> and of course, everybody kind of chuckled a little bit and was like, yeah, you're right, space is cool. But just like, the Nobel Prize winning astronomer asks you, what do you find interesting about, what do you like about astronomy? What, what interests you? You just like, space. Like, of course, it's still my answer, because that is what interests me about astronomy. I, I, I like space. Space is cool. Space is pretty. We don't know very much about space, which makes it kind of intriguing, because like, we know dark matter has to exist. We, we talked about that this morning. Um, Dark matter has to exist because you see these galaxies spinning around a lot faster than they should given the mass, given the mass of all the stars and stuff inside them. And you see the middle of these galaxies and the stars are just flipping around a lot faster than they should. So there has to be something there affecting, affecting their movement. And, that, and so we call it dark matter because we don't know what it is, but there has to be something. Dark matter, there you go. And what else, what do we talk about tonight? Um, he talked a lot about the James, the James Webb telescope and just about, and what it's taken to get to where it is and what they need to do next in order to actually get it up into space. Because right now, They've just got these, it looks kind of like a honeycomb. It's just this, these sections of these gold hexagons, and it's about six and a half meters, he said, which is like 20 meters-ish, I think he said. But it, it, it's big. And that has been shaken around a bunch to make sure it can survive liftoff. And they are now, it is right now, it is in Texas in a vacuum chamber to make sure it can survive the vacuum of space and the cold of space because it's going to be at about 40 degrees Kelvin, which is about negative 400 degrees Celsius, uh, Fahrenheit, negative 400 Fahrenheit. That's really cold and that's the hot temperature okay so the, the 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 some of the sensor equipment needs to be at about seven degrees kelvin seven degrees kelvin okay that's so cold so they've actually built it a little refrigerator so that it will stay cold enough to take accurate pictures because apparently negative 400 degrees Fahrenheit is too hot. <laughs> I find it ridiculous. But it's just, space is cool. What else do we talk about? Oh yeah, we took the title of the lecture, like the talk, lecture talk thingy, whatever the word is. It was entitled, Where Did We Come From and How Do We Know? 
And of course, every time I read that title, my brain instantly comes up, instantly follows up with, where did it come from, Cotton Eye Joe? And that's not obnoxious at all. I apologize if that's forever stuck in your head now. I'm not sorry at all, it's stuck in mine. You're gonna join in my suffering. All right, so. Just like, where did everything come from? And he talked about the Big Bang and why he doesn't, he doesn't like the term Big Bang because it gives everybody the image of a firecracker. Like, it, it just goes boom and there's a center and there's an edge and there's an instant of explosion. But he said that that's not the, really the way space works. According to what uh, Dr. Mather said, there is no center and there is no edge to the universe. The universe is infinite. And just a weird peculiarity of space is that space is, space is not only, space is infinite, but space is also expanding. And it's expanding faster and faster and faster and faster, which is really weird and really interesting. Like, why is it doing, that's what I love about these sorts of things, because you, it just, it's, you, ans you get some questions answered, you learn some things about this, and then you look at something and you're just like, okay, we know this, but, but why? Why do we know this? Why is it happening? Why? What? This is confusing. I want to know more. What? Why? And everything you learn just leads to another why question. And that's why science is so awesome. And it's, and it's just such a big thing because every, you want to know why. Human brains are designed to want to know why, to look for patterns, to figure out, to want to know how things work. And it's, I love, I love science, and I love space, and space is awesome, and just, it's so huge, and so gorgeous, and so unintentionally dangerous, because space isn't dangerous, well, I'm going to say this, and then you're going, and then I'm going to explain, so just hear me out, space isn't dangerous, space just, is and then there's us these tiny squishy little these squishy little human beings who decide that we want to go up there even though we're designed for this we're designed for an atmosphere and to have warmth and we're designed to we, we are designed for this but we decide we want to go up there which is like the opposite of where we're supposed to be. But we went up there and we came back and we brought some stuff back home with us. And I think just the fact that human beings can go to some place that is just so unintentionally dangerous to us and we came back and, and it was at the point, like when space shuttles were going up and down all the time, People got to the point where going up into space was like, oh yeah, that's the thing we do. You're going up into space! And it's gotten, and it was common enough that it just became whatever. We're going up into space again. Yeah, pff, who cares? And isn't that just the craziest and coolest thing? We are incredibly in, 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 in <laughs> words. It's just so cool, the, the human ingenuity, that we can do that. And we can do that with, with machines the size of this room with less computing power than my phone. Just, it's, that's just incredible. And just the fact that we've learned so much about space. Space is just it's unimaginably vast. Because we say things like, oh, it's a million light years away. It's a billion light years away. But I don't know about you, but my, my, my brain just blanks out at about, at, at, a, at like a couple hundred thousand. And it, everything translates to big, big space. But like a million might be about that big 
so say a million's about this big, a billion I might think is about this big, because I can, like my brain just, just I, I can't visualize a million versus a billion versus two billion versus, I don't, I have no concept of how big that is. But it's, 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 it's incredible, you know? That there's just something so big that humans just named it space. And, and we get, and humans get to go up and look at it. And I get to look at pictures that were taken by a satellite as it crashed into another planet that's, that it, it's, it's so unimaginably far away. And that's within our own solar system. And I get to see pictures taken by a satellite that we crashed into it. And I just think that is the coolest thing. And we're working towards human beings going to Mars, going to another planet. We get to do that. And we have, we're working towards the, getting the technology to be able to do that. And that's just the, just, space is just so cool. And yeah. Awesome and it's it's huge and it's terrifying and it's beautiful and and I, I just really like space. And right now, um because I'm still not sure what I want to do with my life, so right now I don't know enough about it to make a call. Like whether I like space enough to pursue it as a career or whether I just I'm really passionate about space as a hobby. Because it's just so cool. And you get to go out. You can get, like, a telescope and just point it at the sky and go look at it and be like, oh, look, there's a nebula. I, I did that last week. And that is it's really cool. Or you get to just point it and be like, oh, there's Neptune. I saw Neptune. Okay, can we just talk about that for a second? I saw Neptune. The planet It's like an insanely large amount of light years away from us. Okay. And I actually got to saw, got to actually, like, see it. Not, like, with my naked eye or anything, but, like, we, we have a telescope. I looked through a telescope, and I saw Neptune. You, you kind of take that for granted, but I saw Neptune. And that's just, that's really cool. Just take a second to think about that. That is really cool. So, yeah, I think I've rambled enough about space. I'm sorry, I've just been absorbing space knowledge all of today and just being, just taking in the information and the excitement of everybody else. And it's just a bit kind of, I'm just pulling in like a sponge. And now I've got to kind of wring out the information and look for, and the excitement so I can get more stuff in, but I, space, just, just space. Oh, wait, 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 no, one more thing, one more thing. Um, okay, and Dragon Con was just a thing that happened, so, um, yeah, that, that's in the works. It's, I can, look down, looking down at my monitor right now, I'm, I'm working on editing, editing it all down because I actually have editing software now. Yay! But yes, Dragon Con video for 2017. I will get that out before next year. I promise. Within the next month, within this month, I can't. I can't say for sure. But before next year, this will not turn into another 2016 Dragon Con thing. So. Bye, guys.